by transcription. Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes the star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the famous musical hit, Madam Sherry, starring Gordon McRae and his guest star, Marion Bell. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and the music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight, another great musical success is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you very much, Marvin Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Our guest this evening is Marion Bell, the charming prima donna who scored such a success on Broadway a few seasons ago in Brigadoon. Tonight, Marion appears as the little convent girl, Yvonne, in our production of the famous musical hit, Madame Sherry. <laughs> Mr. Sherry, and with your permission, I'd like to tell you how there came to be a Madam Sherry. A few years ago, I ran a dancing school in New York. On the whole, life was very enjoyable. I had a fairly comfortable living allowance from my uncle Theophilus, and I ran the dancing school to augment that allowance. My pupils were charming. Why, I can see them now lined up for the morning exercise. Is this because I tell her that, Mr. Sherry? Excellent, excellent. Will you see if I'm doing this spin properly, Mr. Sherry? Oh, that's splendid, splendid. But watch your arms. Remember, young ladies, young gentlemen, every movement must be graceful. Every gesture a melody. Every little movement has a meaning on its own. Yes, my 
pupils were charming, my allowance was ample. Life was most pleasant. There was only one catch to the whole thing. My Uncle Theophilus. He had been sending me my weekly allowance under the illusion that it was being spent in a very different manner than the way it was actually being spent. I thought he'd never find out. But one day, while I was conducting a class, my housekeeper, Catherine, brought me a letter from him. Is something wrong, Mr. Sherry? You look very ill. Well, I don't feel very good, Catherine. Does the letter contain bad news? It certainly does. My uncle Theophilus and his niece Ivan are coming for a visit, and they're arriving today. Oh, it would be very pleased, Mr. Sherry. Well, I'm not. You see, when I was young, Theophilus, Theophilus, who's he? He's an uncle of mine with eight million or nine, and he's very good to me. When I was a boy, it was his greatest joy, the piano I should play. But the coin he sent. I quickly spent in a very different way. He's an odd man, he's a very odd man, is the Theophilus, yes indeed. I must confess, he seems to guess just what I'll never need. Piano, tunes, hot drum, or fife, I couldn't play a tune to save my life. He's an odd man, he's the Ophilus, a funny old customer. He's an odd man, he's a very odd man, he's the Ophilus, yes indeed. I must confess, he seems to guess just what I'll never need. If I were bald as a billiard ball, he'd send me home from now till fall. He's an odd man, is the Ophilus, a funny old cuss, a funny old cuss, a funny old customer. And now, class, if you'll excuse me for a few moments, I must prepare for my uncle's arrival. Just go on practicing and I'll be back presently. Come, Catherine. Yes, Mr. Sherry. Catherine, you can see the mess I'm in. My uncle thinks this is a music conservatory, that I am a talented pianist, and that I'm married and settled down. If he finds out I'm not any of these things, I'm certain to lose my allowance, my dancing school, and maybe even lose my life. Oh, I, I hope he wouldn't go to any such lengths as that. How long will he be here? I don't know. He doesn't say. Well, um, couldn't you just pretend that you had a conservatory and that you had a wife? Catherine? I think you have the germ of a great idea. After much persuasion, Catherine agreed to assume the role of Madame Sherry while my uncle was here. My uncle and his niece, Yvonne, arrived just as I finished telling my pupils there will be no more dancing lessons for a few days. Well, Edward, I must say this is quite a nice-looking conservatory, isn't it, Yvonne? Oh, it certainly is, Uncle Theophilus. I'm glad to see you so both. Happy, married, and settled. All young people should be married and settled. It's the ideal arrangement. Uh, uh, yes, yes, Uncle Theophilus. And now, if your good wife will be so kind as to show me to my room, I'd like to rest before dinner. Of course, if you'll come this way. You know, I've been looking forward to meeting you for such a long time, Catherine. Uh, do you mind if I call you Catherine? Catherine? Well, why not? That's my name. <laughs> Shall I show you to your room, Ivan? Well, I'd like to sit here for a moment if I may. This is all so exciting. And you see, I just got out of school. Yes, I imagine New York does look exciting to a schoolgirl. Especially to one like me. I'm just a little convent girl with wide and wondering eye. A little bird that left its nest and learning how to fly. Yes, I've been told that there are things in cities large and small that never, never could be found behind a convent wall. And this is so. There are some things that are not good for you to know. Things they say are wrong or just the things 
things you want to do. I have heard a lot of speeches, a lot of heavenly charms from just a trifling kiss. If she feels it through, a boy, I'd like to try, wouldn't you? Still, I'd be scolded if I do. I thought, how dull to have to entertain an elderly uncle and a schoolgirl. The second day, I found it rather entertaining to show someone about the city who had never seen it before. And by the third day, I found that I had never seen New York myself until I saw it with her. That night, I took Ivan and Uncle Theophilus on a round of the clubs. And when we arrived home, Uncle stamped off to bed. And Ivan stood in the drawing room talking to me for a moment. Look at the lights of New York down there. It looks like a fairy tale city, doesn't it? Yes. And you look like a princess out of a fairy tale. Oh, I feel like one. A princess in search of Prince Charming. Edward, are you really happily married? Hmm? Oh, I don't know. I suppose so. I never thought much about it. You never thought about it? Why? I don't know. I, I just wondered. I, I used to keep a picture of you on my dresser at school. I got it from Uncle. When the girls asked me who it was, I'd say, Well, that's my cousin Edward by marriage. When I grow up, I'm going to marry him. But then you got married before I grew up. If, if I weren't married. If, I, Edward, if you weren't married. I think we'd better say goodnight. But I'm not sleepy. <laughs> well, then, shall we dance? <laughs> Wonderful. I'll... I'll turn on the phonograph. Do you like to dance, Yvonne? I love it. Dancing can mean so much. Every has a meaning all its own. Every little feeling finds some part you can be shown. And every love You're lovely, Yvonne. And you're a wonderful dancer, too, Edward. Well, you dance as well as Mr. Dimble. Who on earth is Mr. Dimble? He's our dancing instructor at school. Oh, I see. Edward. Yes, darling? As long as this is only a make-believe night anyhow, do you suppose it'd be all right if, if we pretended for a moment that dreams did come true? And... And that I did grow up and marry you. Couldn't we pretend that just long enough for you to kiss me goodnight? I think perhaps that might be arranged. And every love from the must be sweet 
the second act of Madame Sherry in just a moment. But first, if any one thing is symbolic of our post-war life in America, it is building. Building of every kind. From the farm to the largest city, we have seen a tremendous program of construction. Entire residential developments, complete with stores, schools, churches, and streets, have sprung up. Individual homes have filled up those empty spots on streets in every community. But when you read of the billions of dollars being spent for construction... Think for a moment of the millions of tons of materials of all kinds going into those factories, office buildings, stores, municipal improvements, and most important, into homes. New homes, for instance, begin in many parts of the country. Lumber, cement, brick, steel, plumbing fixtures, paint, glass, hundreds of other things must be processed, assembled, and moved. Only because there are railroads capable of moving dependably and in mass quantities everything needed, where and when it is needed has it been possible to meet the demands of America's builders. For only the railroads can perform transportation service on such a scale as this. And in these times of higher prices, it is also important to know that the railroads perform this service at lower average charges than those of any other form of transportation offering service all over the country. Yes, construction of all kinds is another example of the important stake we all have in the railroads. A stake shared by the farmer, manufacturer, retailer, consumer, by everyone in the country. In one way or another, the railroads serve all of us. And the more this service is used, the more efficient and economical will it become. The more we will all benefit. That's another reason why it's good business to do business with the railroads. And now here is the second act of Madame Sherry, starring Gordon McRae and his guest star, Marion Bell. <laughs> Uncle Theophilus and Ivan paid me quite a lengthy visit. And as the days passed, I found myself thinking more and more of Ivan. She was different from any girl I had ever known. Her eyes, her hair, and her smile. Especially her smile. Some like a girl who is clever, who plays the piano and sings. Some like a girl who is ever well dressed with her jewels and rings. Some like a graceful and slender, think the queen is alone with her while. But the girl that you love, oh girl, is above. Is the girl who knows how to smile Maybe a bright smile A winsome bright smile Maybe a smile that simply beams Maybe a sad smile Maybe a glad smile Maybe the smile you see in dreams smile that's haughty, bewitching, naughty, and full of mischief, foo and foo. But like a small smile, the best of all smile, it is the smile she means for you. Maybe a bright smile, a winsome bright smile, maybe a smile that simply beams. Maybe a bright smile, maybe a bright smile, maybe the smile you see in a smile that's haughty, bewitching, naughty, and full of mischief through and through. But large or small smile, the best of all smiles, it is the smile she means for you. The smile she means for you. Before my Uncle Theophilus, I did my best 
to appear a devoted husband to Madame Sherry. But gradually the game began to be too much for me. It was also becoming too much for Madame Sherry and too much for Ivan. Each time Uncle forced me to kiss Catherine, Ivan seemed to get terribly upset. And the night before my uncle and Ivan were supposed to leave, Ivan and Madame Sherry got into a rather intimate conversation. Uh, you're a very fortunate woman, Madame Sherry. Why do you say that? How proud you must be to be his wife. Do you mean Mr. Sherry's wife? Well, naturally. Well, you're in love with him. Oh, yes, madame, but uh, I'll never see him again after tomorrow. He'll never know. Tell him you're in love with him. Ma'am, aren't you in love with him? In love with him, of course not. Then why did you agree to be his wife? The pay was good. <laughs> I think I understand. My dear child, I'm not his wife. You're not his wife? No. He asked me to pretend to be his wife so that his uncle wouldn't stop his allowance. But you're not his wife. I should say not. I'm his housekeeper, and I have a very fine husband of my own. And I had a hard time getting him to agree to this, let me tell you. Thanks for telling me this. Well, you've changed the whole world for me. Now, I'm going to find Mr. Sherry and tell him that I've told you. And from then on... It's up to you. He isn't married. He isn't married. And I've been so jealous. <laughs> Every time he kissed, he kissed, he kissed. A bird, a rusty. He kissed, he kissed. Oh. Kissing Edward Sherry? Let me finish, Uncle Theophilus. I'll tell you in a minute. Ivan, Edward, what are you thinking about? You, a happily married man. I'm not a happily married man. Then you, an unhappily married man? <laughs> He's not married at all. Not married? You mean that woman who lives here, who, who calls herself Madame Sherry, is not, is not? That's exactly what we mean. She just took the job for money, Uncle Theophilus. Oh, she did, did she? Now, now, wait a minute, Uncle. I'll try to explain. You see, I... I was... Well, it's rather difficult to explain. I can see why it might be. Oh, no, it isn't. Uncle Theophilus, Edward wasn't married. But, you see, uh, he should have... You said he should have a wife, so 
He pretended that he had one, but he really didn't. Oh, I see. In order to cheat me out of my money. That's right. No. <laughs> That's wrong. In order to... Well, I couldn't keep the dancing school running without any money. It takes time to get enough pupils, and I... Dancing school? I thought this was a music conservatory. Well, it's a musical conservatory of the dance. That's right. Anyhow, when you wrote you were coming, Edward had to have a wife, so he asked his housekeeper if she would be Madame Sherry in name only for the time that you were here. And she did. And that's the whole story. So there isn't any Madame Sherry at all? No. But I hope there's going to be. After all, Uncle... It's a situation very easily remedied. Something tells me I let you leave that school entirely too soon. Could you be happy, Yvonne, living with a very poor man? Darling, I could be happy with you anywhere. All right. All right, I give up. If you two are determined to get married, I see no reason why I should play the heavy and have everyone hate me. I'll continue both your allowances. Uncle Theophilus, you're an angel. You're wonderful. And I'll never be able to thank you enough for coming on this visit and for bringing with you the future... Madam Sherry. Thanks to the other members of our cast, to Isabel Jewell, who played Catherine, and to Ted Osborne, who played Uncle Theophilus. Madam Sherry, with book and lyrics by Otto Harbach and music by Carl Hoschner, was dramatized for radio by Gene Holloway. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this time by the American Railroads. And no matter what your job, no matter where you live, in one way or another, these railroads play an important part in your daily life. Take your home, for instance. Maybe miles away from a railroad track, but just the same, in getting that home built, you used a lot of railroad service to bring together dependably and at low cost the things it takes to build, equip, and furnish a home. Yes, for all of us, the railroads are mighty close to home. And that's another reason why it's good business to do business with the railroads. And now, here again, is lovely Marion Bell. Marion, we've been trying for two seasons to get you out here for a guest appearance on the Railroad Hour, and we finally made it. I know it, Gordon. Seems that every time you wanted me, I was booked somewhere else. So we waited till you were going to be starred right here in town and then nailed you down. <laughs> Say, how are rehearsals for the Chocolate Soldier coming along, Marion? Oh, just fine. I'm all excited about it. It's, it's such a beautiful production. Uh, we're opening at the Philharmonic next Monday, you know. Well, you can look for me right in the front row center. Can I... Can you look for me back here on the railroad hour? Again, the week after next, Gordon? I think so. And we're going to look for the silver lining together in Sally, remember? Uh Uh-huh. Say, I wish you could listen to next week's show, Marion. Nadine Kahn is going to be our guest in the very famous old musical, The Prince of Pilsen. Sounds wonderful. I I wish I could hear it. Good night, Gordon. Good night, Marion, and good luck in the chocolate soldier. Well, it looks as though we're ready to pull out. And so, until next week, goodbye. <laughs> Madam Sherry was presented by special arrangement with Tam's Whitmark Music Library. Gordon McRae is currently being seen starring in the Warner Brothers Technicolor musical hit, The Daughter of Rosie O'Grady. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff. Our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. In this week's issue of Quick Magazine, there's an interesting feature story about the Railroad Hour and a full-page picture of our singing star, Gordon McRae. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroad. And now, keep tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. (laughs) 
Now it's the voice of Firestone and Eleanor Steber on NBC. NBC.